Welcome to today's 10 minute topics, Swarf and Chips. So we're gonna find out how you make an alloy wheel. It's gonna be a really good one. So we're here at Rimstock, the UK's largest manufacturer of alloy wheels in the West Midlands. And this is where it all begins. Here at Rimstock, we produce alloy wheels, starting from uh, logs all the way through billets. We're totally vertically integrated to actually painting and dispatching the wheels to our customers. For the Rotary Forge, we actually bring the parts in as a, as a log. We cut the logs into billets. We heat them up to about 500 uh, degrees centigrade. We then actually put the parts through the oven. From the oven, we raise them and put them into the rotary forge. And then we actually produce a pancake on the rotary forge. So if these blanks or billets go in there at six o'clock in the morning, that means they come out the other end over there at 12. Would you believe at a whopping 540 degrees Celsius, I can feel the heat from here. I just wanted to tell you something quite interesting about looking at a wheel and some of the properties. So not only are the spokes there for the beauty and the aesthetic look for the client to choose, however, it's also for the mechanical properties to make sure the rim doesn't collapse. So one, we're talking about looking good and the beauty, but also the other half of it is strength. So it's beauty and strength. So the log comes from the oven and onto the rotary forge. So what happens there? Okay, at the rotary forge, we actually, um, the billet goes into the forge at around the 490 degrees. The tooling is then preheated to about 160 to 180 degrees. And then we create the pancake with about 250 tons of pressure. We talk about the industry being super duper clean, but this area, there's a lot of black absolutely everywhere. But a little fact about this machine, a lot of the time the ram and the pressure comes from the top. On this occasion, it comes from four meters into the ground. So there's 250 tons of pressure of ram coming up from the ground here. So the next thing is to actually create the rim, the wet width of the rim. And to do that, we preheat the pancake up to about 180 degrees. The part then is moved on to the flow former. The flow former then will produce the width to whatever the customer requirement is. So the pancake that you see there, formed into a wheel, happens on the machine over there. We heat treat the aluminium wheels to a T6 condition. This means that we fully anneal the wheels to start off with to relieve all the stress that's built up during the forging process. And then we participation heat treat the parts to make sure the hardness and the mechanical properties are at the light level. And this is the heat treatment unit behind us here. Now, just to reiterate what Adrian was saying, these wheels can come in different grades, T6, T7 or T8, but they choose T6 because of the hardness and flexibility it offers to their wheels. There's lots of machining going on around us, Adrian. So does this happen on the next stage? Yes, it does. So basically what we have to do, first of all, is pre-turn the parts before we can actually do the milling. And to actually do this, we have vertical turning sensors that produces the overall diameter, the inside diameter, and the actual bores of the, of the wheels that actually fit onto the axles of the car. So you're telling me now it's almost ready to fit on a car? Yes, once the bore is produced, that is it then. We don't actually touch the bore afterwards. Adrian, the wheels look good to go, but not quite there, are they? 
No, they're not. Um, we have to first of all put the spokes into the wheel to make them look what the customer requires. And this is actually where all the milling operations come in. So we have uh, mainly two types of milling operation. We've got an A surface milling and a B surface milling. Um, so this is carried out. And actually the average milling cycle at the moment is around six hours. An interesting fact for you as well. So Adrian told me you can have three spokes and anything up to 24. I think 24 was the max he's ever had, but he said you could go even further. But what, of course, that's what the client's after, but there's a bit of a science behind it because you've also got to measure the depth of these spokes, how far they go in, because they've all got to support the rim around the outside. And here's an alloy wheel that has just gone through its roughing operation. Now, as Adrian stated, the total machining time on these wheels is about six hours. But since they've gone from their vertical machining centre strategy across to their horizontal, they've minimised the amount of operations and they now do these in two ops. So how do you know that the wheels are perfect now? Well, really, uh, you're absolutely right. What we've first got to do is, we, because we've introduced a lot of stress into the wheels, so we've now got to make sure that they're not deformed in any way. And what we do, we do a final rim turn, which is a very light cut, and then we actually balance the wheels 100% to make sure that they are perfect to go to the customer. And just like inspection, this is their way of checking that these wheels are to tolerance. The wheels are looking amazing now. Is that the end? Is that the finished product? No, um, really now we have to actually inspect the wheel before they go into our paint shop. And there is where they get their personalization, where we, we can actually create the wheels to probably over a hundred different varieties of color, and diamond turned or diamond milled to give the customer exactly what they want. Adrian, where are we likely to see these wheels? A absolutely everywhere. They're global in nature. The wheels go everywhere around the world and they're on race circuits as well as on the ordinary roads. I'm really tired. It's been a really good day. Those jokes are a bit flat, Lindsay. <laughs> They're a bit flat. I like it. Uh, but it was so good about coming to a company like this is the next time you're getting in your car, you never know, but those wheels on your car could have been made here at Rimstock. And they're likely to be. When you see the amount of wheels that go through production here, they're looking at possibly doubling, if not trebling, their output here from their site in the West Midlands in the coming months and years. So they must be selling a lot of wheels. They, they must be really good. Yeah, they're doing really well. <laughs>